idea of sweeps. Sweeps are something I like the idea of. Being able to get one. Because it's the, the sweep is the ultimate in all of the things that I go for. You know? Like, I like going for... Uh, overall ranking and average finish and stuff like that. So sweeps are the ultimate in that. Yeah, there was a time where you could get a world record in some rain stages. Right, rotary time. How have I managed to get 48k in this thing without... I must have... Do events not count if you do... If they're... Uh... Oh, that actually does look quite good. This thing's so narrow, what the fuck? No wonder it slides around. Oh my god, it drives like the Kai. It dr Oh my god. There's a thing I said when the first played Rotary Kai. When it came out in Australia. It drives like a Mario Kart car. Where you've got a marker in the middle of the car. It's not four wheels. Art of Rally Cars feel like they have two wheels, like two roller wheels to me. But this and the Kai feel like they've got a fucking pin in the middle of them and they're like, um, oh, what's the, there was a toy car that ran on like Hot Wheels type tracks, but it had a ball bearing in the centre of it and that was how it ran. And that was it, it just had a ball bearing in the middle of it. Fake wheels. That just slid on whatever, but the ball bearing was actually the thing that moved. I can't remember, but that's how it feels like it drives, like it's. God. I'm so glad I didn't get this in actual wet conditions though now. Because I was thinking, ah, oh, it's in Norway, which is shit, because it's. Like r really twisty turny. I already not a massive fan of Norway because of the twisty turniness of it. But God, getting this. We'll get there.
thinking about setting up Windows 10 VM. Fucking hell. Problem is, you'd have to set up a Windows 10 VM. It, it's not the setting up the VM that's the work, it's the environment, the programming environment in which to do it in. Getting Unity and figuring out where the fuck those... I'm pretty sure it would compile. If On Linux, in fact. I don't think you need to set up a, Unity, a, a, a Windows 10 VM. I think you just need to find out where the fuck you get those files from and how you actually set up a C-sharp solution properly. Because it tried to do everything. When I used that Hello World program and just changed all the code to what I found, it tried to work. It just couldn't find the, the DLLs. It's just how the fuck do you add those DLLs and where do you get the ones that I was missing? Because there's some that come from the mod manager. Yeah, it'd be easier to get the Unity imports, but... It'd definitely be possible on Linux, I believe. Actually, I wonder if the Unity imports are in the game itself. I wonder if the DLLs are available inside some of the files in from the game. Or if they get, like, compiled down. But potentially, the game files, these game files, have all the DLLs we actually need. Again, it's how the fuck do we get them into a project, but... 
I wouldn't be surprised thinking about it if these DLLs are It's not like the mod actually ships with them, meaning that the and if it requires the DLL, that means that uh, they must be somewhere shipped with the game, shipped with the Unity engine if it requires the DLL. I mean, if you want to try and write. C Sharp, I actually like C Sharp, I've got to be honest. C Sharp is a good language hampered by an absolutely dog shit everything else ecosystem around it. Which hilariously is exactly the same problem that Java has. Java is a perfectly fine programming language. The problem is everything else. And the Embrace Extend Extinguish. But that wasn't Java's fault. Yeah, the other stuff's shit. The thing is... C Sharp is fantastic if you're going to stay within the Windows ecosystem, but if you're going outside of the Windows ecosystem, there are better options than C Sharp Mono stuff. You're going to struggle to find resources that you can guarantee work with Mono and projects like Mono rather than that. You end up with an EXE file when you build stuff which runs perfectly if you run it with the mono program but by default most people when you send it to them are going to try and run it in wine and nine times out of ten it's not going to work in wine because it's actually a linux native thing so it doesn't work with the net redistributables that wine has at which point what the fuck are you playing at if you're on mac and you only want to put care about Mac, write it in Swift. If you're on Linux, and you only want to write it in Linux, uh, write it for Linux, write it in whatever the fuck you like, Swift also works, to be fair. Um, quite a good programming language. If you need it to work for everything, write it in something truly cross-platform. Um like Java. If you need it to work for everything but you're willing to put a bit more work in to make it work for everything then write it in something like Rust that compiles very easily across platforms and make sure that all your tool works, are, your, your frameworks are cross-platform. But C Sharp itself because of Mono versus .NET means that your code isn't portable. Your code just quite often isn't portable, which sucks because I enjoyed learning C Sharp, I enjoyed C Sharp as a language. It's a good language. It improves some of the things that make Java a bit uh, hard to work with in terms of the actual structuring of the typing of the language. Though I believe Java has got better since the last time I touched Java, which was well, Java 8 wasn't the latest, but Java 8 was what we were using.
But yeah, the fact that it dumps you with a .exe is probably one of the most brutal things. A .exe that might not work properly and why. Never make a game you're making sure it only works on Linux. Is that properly only works or you're only going to compile it and ship it and test it for Linux? Because I did that for one Ludum Diary. I made a thing in Godot. I made a save function. I was like... I don't know if this save function works not on Linux. I'm not sure if any of the things that I did are hard-coded paths. There is a chance that your percent app data percent is going to get a .config folder put into it. Because I used... Uh, I used whatever the system thing is that should work on Linux and Mac that gives you the uh, default config folder. make sure it's impossible to port to Windows. Choose a framework that's only Linux. That would be tricky, considering people have managed to get uh, entire X servers running inside of Windows Subsystem for Linux. Which is a terrible name, by the way. Can I just moan about that as well? Windows Subsystem for Linux. In my head, that's the wrong way round. In my head, that's a Windows is the subsystem. that runs for Linux. So, under Linux goes the subsystem that is Windows. Subsystem is just when you bottom GF's plural. Also, that's our way to get people to run the uh, to run the thing, because I bet that comes with Python. Just install Windows Subsystem for Linux, and then you that's like 10 gig, an entire ass bare bones Ubuntu core. And then you can run our Python code, because that comes with Python. I'm pretty sure. Easier way to get Python on Windows. Probably less easy than just installing it from the store. But you can guarantee that it will pump it out to the console and not close the app after.
And it comes with V. In fact, when I first used it, I was so confused. Because I have never used a system up to that point in my life, and I didn't realise this was the case, where V, VI, as a command, was not just an alias for Vim. And that I had never up to that point actually used V. I had actually just used Vim. But I was taught on a course, a, a bash course, that you have to learn how, the reason you have to learn how to use V is because it will be installed on every server. It's the only thing guaranteed to be installed on every server. So you have to learn how to use it because otherwise, um, because if you go in to do a server maintenance, you can't rely on having a decent text editor. You definitely can't rely on having GUI, but you can't rely on having an internet. This was the interesting thing. You have SSH access, but you can't rely on having an internet connection to download anything. Now, that kind of works for Mac, but if you jump, the premise was that it was a server. So it's like, yeah, I'm just gonna, just gonna, um, apt install nano here real quick. But in theory, potentially, you don't have privileged access or whatever, I understand. Someone, somewhere, has set up a server and never installed a decent text editor. No, VI is completely different. Actual VI feels so bad compared to Vim. Because it was, it was, Vim is VI improved. Um, but it was improved in the late 90s, I think. <laughs> Which is why everyone just installs Vim and it gets an alias. The basic commands are the same, yeah. The basic commands are the same. I found that when I was using Vim, at uh, VI, sorry, there was a lot of bugs when switching between editor and non-editor mode. Backrun dash SVS code. Yeah. When I first set up a server, I uh, stopped using a Minecraft host because I wanted to run other games than Minecraft. But primarily I wanted Minecraft. But it was cheaper to get a Minecraft host Get a, I could get a, a small, a small VPS with more power than my Minecraft server for about the same price, basically. But I had to do the actual server setup myself. The first thing I did was learned how to install and use um, VNC, real VNC. I've been using Linux for a little while at this point, probably probably a year um, so I didn't know my way around the terminal but I, I, I did that anyway installed it got it set up and the funniest part was I realized after about a week that I'd done all this setup I've got VNC on it and the only thing I'd done was opened XFCE and opened up a terminal window and everything was running from a terminal window and pretty much all I'd worked out how to do was because the X server would continue running after I logged out, it would leave that window open so the Minecraft server would keep running. But effectively all I needed to do was learn what screen was to keep the program running in the background. Nano's great. Nano is fantastic as long as you don't need to do a lot with it. Nano is one of those things that is absolutely fantastic, but it is not really extensible. I wouldn't want to do large amounts of programming in it. Using it as a proper like code editor is not something that I would be comfortable doing, but using it to edit, co it is perfect for use of editing config files. Control X is uh, quit, and then you press yes to save. 
It's uh, Emacs bindings, isn't it? It's pretty similar to Emacs bindings. Just simplified. The nice thing about Nano is that it has all the commands at the bottom of the screen, and that's why it's the default text editor for things like um, things like Arch. So it has all the commands at the bottom of the screen, so you can just reference, and it's easy. I love how you do WQ as well. I think gamers do WQ. A friend of mine who doesn't play as many games as me, and d certainly doesn't play PC games, but is a server tech, she said, why the fuck are you using WQ? Why don't you use X? When, but, you know, general joking about how do you exit Vim. And I was like, well, because my hands are kind of there already, because gamer, gamer posture. WQ, they're right next to each other. Right and quit. It's like, but, but X, yeah. Yeah, X doesn't make sense, especially, it, it gets especially confusing when you're using Nano, that it's Control X, because that's cut, but obviously Control C is cancel. X for exit. But in Vim it uh, it's with saving. Rust, by the way. Go to uh, the website xdf.gg, scroll all the way down to the bottom. Might take you a little while, but do that. xdf.gg Or if you want the old one that we had to learn, which was xdf.tykisma.info and uh, if you can't type that out off by heart, I don't know what you're doing. <laughs> it was funny when they said, we've got xdf.gg now and so many, I was like, do I have to replace all my bookmarks? But I've just learned how to type xdf.tykisma.info. <laughs> I can't even spell it out of my head. It's one of those things I only know how to type because you would never say it out loud and spell it. It's just kind of a muscle memory thing to type it. I love that. The first time I saw it scrolling down to the bottom. Maybe it's static type checking power. Rustlang.org. And Rocket and Diesel. I never got on with Rocket, could never figure it out, but I think it was too much for me. Like Django's not something I ever particularly need. Stuff like that. I did learn how to make things with Django at one point because I was I was being pressured into doing DevOps when I was still trying to pretend I wanted to be a programmer. People were saying, "Oh, you like you, you know you like using Python." 
Python's a good language for you. And I was finding it difficult because I'd um, because I'd done iOS app development. And Swift isn't needed outside of iOS app, but I knew I really didn't want to do iOS app development for a career. But like the only other thing I knew was Python. And a bit of C sharp, but pretty much only C sharp for Unity. Which is almost other than um, other than the basic syntax is basically you don't know C sharp. <laughs> Which I now realise I also don't know Swift because I only know Swift for iOS app development, don't know Swift for desktop app development, desktop whatever, don't know Swift for just making things programmatically. I did make a GUI app, here we go again, in Swift though, just because I wanted to see how it would feel a few years after I'd stopped developing iOS apps. And I thought, uh, I was looking at GTK, I was weighing up whether I'd use GTK or uh, QT, learning them both. And I saw you could write in Swift for GTK. And I was like, Do you know what, fuck it, let's see, can I get this set up on Linux and write a Swift GUI app? And how does it feel to write a Swift GUI app with GTK? And I'll be honest, horrible. Swift, great, but the bindings just felt off. I think because you go from Apple's integrated system where they've basically made a language for one specific thing, and you go to a different thing that's like a binding over from C++. Hold on. If you have Rust installed, you can check out my Rust Notes app. It's not actually available. You can't find it anywhere. It's, I've, I've never uploaded it to the internet. Also, I don't need... It's Rust. I don't need Rust installed. You can send me the bloody binary for it. It's a binary. Just compile the fucker. I do have Rust installed, though. <laughs> I'm push notes app in my Rust notes app. Push this config. Lovely. Cheers, Turbo. That was an absolute heathen of a car to drive. That would have been cool in Germany in the dry. What have I got next, actually? 